Did you know that there are more vending machines in Japan as compared to anywhere else in the world? About one for every 23 people? If you look hard enough, you could even find a hotel in Japan run by robots with a dinosaur waiting to greet you at the front desk. Why is Japan so crazy about automation and how could it possibly impact the world? If you speak with Japanese entrepreneurs and scholars who are pioneers in the field of robotics and automation, many of them nostalgically recall the famous manga Astro Boy as being a source of inspiration. The manga depicts Astro Boy, the title character, as a robot created by Dr. Tenma to replace his deceased son. The robot has a heart and a soul and is very human-like in appearance and behavior. This recurring theme in anime, television and Japanese day-to-day -day life could be better explained if we understood how Japanese view robots. In the UK, for instance, robots are defined as mere programmable machines, whereas in Japan, robots are considered artificial humans that have an identity of their own, a spirit and a soul. This outlook is deep-rooted in Japanese culture. The first robots could be traced as far back as 1875, Tanaka Isashige, a Japanese inventor, created extremely complex toys, capable of serving tea, firing arrows and even writing the Japanese alphabet. Today Japan manufactures everything ranging from industrial worker robots to automated sex dolls. They even have Kratos, a giant transformer-like robot with a cockpit for human pilot and humanoids, capable of the subtlest human movements that would amaze you. The reason behind such a fervent pursuit of automation goes beyond culture and television. Japan is a super-aging society, with a quarter of its population over the age of 65, and that number is rising fast. A problem that is sure to hit Western nations such as the USA and Canada over the following decade as well. A large portion of Japanese citizens do not date, in fact, a government survey found that 69% of Japanese men and 59% of Japanese women do not have a romantic partner. With long working hours, cramped housing and rising costs, the country has one of the lowest birth rates in the world, with just 8.4 children being born per thousand inhabitants over the last five years. This has led to large labor shortages and very high labor costs. The capital Tokyo, for example, has twice as many job vacancies as applicants. Many analysts believe that immigration could be the solution to Japan's labor woes, but the country does not view immigration favorably. As a result, companies turn to automation as a quick and efficient solution to backfill vacant positions. With Japan's extremely low crime rate, robots and machines can be installed almost anywhere without fear of robbery or damage. Many other nations would think twice before installing, say, a standalone vending unit on a quiet street. With all the above factors in play, it does make sense for Japan to take the automated route. But how could this impact other nations? For now, high functionality robots are still very expensive to manufacture and hence are commercially unfeasible. But with huge impetus being provided by the Japanese government towards robotic automation, the scenario may soon change. We could see a rise in robotic exports coupled with clones popping up across the globe, slowing replacing human workforce. The World Economic Forum has predicted that robotic automation will result in the net loss of more than 5 million jobs across 15 developed nations by 2020. India is already facing the heat with layoffs taking place across the IT industry. Automation does boost productivity, provides companies with a competitive edge and reduces cost. But how far should we take it? Will Japan's labor shortage eventually lead to a global crisis that the world may not be ready for yet?